Hi, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. Today I thought we'd do a fantastic painting that has some big almighty mountains in it, and maybe some big trees, and let's just start and see what happens. Let's start off and have them graphically run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting, and it'll come across starting with a titanium white and working right around. While they're doing that, let's go up here. I've already covered the canvas with a thin, even coat of the liquid white, and it's wet and slick and all ready to go. Thought today would start out with a with a touch of a yellow ochre. Just a touch. Just tap the brush right into the paint. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, I'm gonna start right up in here and just use little crisscross strokes. Just put a small, small amount of this yellow ochre just in the sky. Just let it sort of bounce around and play. Just like that. Okay, now. To that, I'm going to add the least, least little touch of alizarin crimson, a very, very small amount. See what a small amount's on there? Tiny bit, okay? Let's go up here. Now, I'm just putting a little alizarin crimson right along the edges here. And in reality, this crimson acts as a barrier because I'm going to have blue over here. And if the blue touches this yellow, you know you're going to have a bright green sky and we don't want that today. Okay, so just a little crimson. It just, just protects the yellow. Now then, I'm gonna take and go right into the Midnight Black and Prussian Blue. Oh, these are two strong colors. Be so careful. Okay, let's go back up here. Now, just bounce in a little of that. Still making the little crisscross strokes just the way the teacher used to grade my paper. Just little X's all over the place. And maybe there's a little bit right here. Okay, I'm gonna have some water in this painting. I am an absolute fanatic for water. So we'll take the thalo blue, tiny little bit, and to that I'm gonna mix a little thalo green. So we got thalo blue and thalo green. Let's go right here and just pull it across. Use very little of the thalo green. It is so strong, so strong. And pull from the outside in. Leave a little area open in the center and it'll look like a little, little sheen of light coming across your water when the painting's done. All right. Now then, let me just grab a clean brush. I've got several of these old brushes going so it saves me some time. Be sure your brush is good and dry and start in the light area and begin blending outward. Still making those little crisscross strokes. Just blend it all together. There we go. So you just have a small, small amount of yellow in the sky. You put a little bit more of the yellow in the sky when you initially start than you want because it'll be ate up. <laughs> These other colors would just sort of eat it up. I'm gonna take a little bit of titanium white. And to that, add the least little touch of bright red. Least little touch. Cut me off a little hunk. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe there's a happy little floater cloud. Just sort of lays up here in the sky. You can just put these on with a knife. See, just push them right into the fabric. Little floaters. There they go to show you how to make those. Then we take our two inch brush and very lightly, following the angles, just lift them. Hope you can see those, they're quite light. I don't want very bright clouds in this painting. But when you're doing yours, if you want clouds that stand out a little more, add a little color, easy to do. Let's build us a mountain. Let's start with some Prussian blue, some Van Dyke brown, some Lizard Crimson. Just a small amount of alizarin crimson, unless you want purple mountains. A little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. And let's go right up in here. We'll make some big old huge mountains. Look at there. And we push that paint into the canvas. Push it right into the fabric. You're not gonna hurt this. There's really not much paint on the knife. Push it. Just try to push it right through the canvas and then scrape off all the excess. The more you can scrape off, the easier the next step will be. 
really, really scrape hard. Then take the large brush, grab it, and pull. See, because this canvas is wet with a liquid white, you can move the son of a gun wherever you want it. This was a dry canvas. <laughs> this wouldn't work. Well, you'd be in Agony City. There. See, just pull it like that. And just let it blend right on down till it's just, just sort of hanging there in the mist. The only thing you're worried about at this point is the nice outside edges. You could really, could really care less what's happening below them. Okay, I'll take white, pull it out as flat as I can get it, and cut across. So let's do that one more time while the camera's close and you can see it. Pull it out very, very flat and cut across. Get that little roll of paint. So important. So important. Let's go right up here. There. Now just Barely touching the canvas. Barely touching the canvas. Just allow that to flow right off your knife. No pressure. Absolutely no pressure. Just let your hand just float. Pretend you're a whisper floating across here. This is probably one of the biggest problem areas that people write and tell me they're having, is making this paint break. And by break, I mean leave all these little holes in it. And 99 times out of 100, one of two things is happening. You're using paint that is too thin, or you're applying too much pressure. So you need a firm paint and no pressure. They work together. They work together. And that's, that's what allows you to do all of this. There we go. And you can just put as many or as few of these things in there as you want. Let's take a little phthalo blue and white, just blue and white. Right like that. Pull it out and cut across. Once again, you need that little roll of paint, okay? And let's go back in here and begin dropping in some beautiful little shadows. Notice the angles. Angles in mountains are very important. Your highlights go in one basic angle and your shadows Go in another angle. See? Put all kinds of little things in there. All kinds of little little places. You know, the, there's maybe a mountain goat lives up here and he needs a little place to hide and keep from getting cold at night. Give him give him a little place up here. There. There we go. Just like so many as you want. Anywhere you want to create the illusion of a little ridge, all you have to do basically is drop in a little shadow. That's all. These are your mountains and you can do anything in these mountains that you want. Anything. Anything. Total freedom here. Okay. Now I'll take a clean, dry two-inch brush and I want to diffuse this. So I'm tapping very lightly and following the angles of the mountain. Always follow those angles. There. Over here, you follow these angles. Whichever way the paint goes, that's the way you want these little taps to go. Now lift upward. Gently, gently lift upward. That takes out the little tap marks, softens, blends, and creates that beautiful, beautiful misty effect down at the base of the mountain. And that easy. That easy, you have it. Okay, now then I just take old two inch brush. It's already dirty. I'm gonna take a little midnight black, a little bit of blue, a little touch of Van Dyke brown into it. We'll leave them throw in a tiny bit of white. There we go. Just tap that brush. Okay, let's go right up here. Now maybe, maybe we'll just touch in like that and create the illusion of a few little grassy things that are running Little trees that are running right up the mountain, way back in the distance there. Far, far away. And you can use a one inch brush and lift upward. Just lift upward. See there? Looks like little trees going right up the side of that mountain. Far, far away. Far away, very soft. All right. And tell you what let's do. Let's just use that same color Dyke brown, black, blue, a little white. Let's go right in here, and maybe there's some beautiful little foothills. 
just with the corner of the brush, just using the, just the corner, you can create the illusion of all kinds of little foothills living right here. Look at there. See there, that easy. Now then, with a clean brush, I want to create the mist at the bottom of these. So just tap, give it a pretty, pretty strong tap, lift upward. Yeah, that easy, that easy. We got a little footy hill. Now then, let's take the round brush. I like it, it's fun. Go into some Van Dyke brown, a little bit of dark sienna, just mix them on the brush. I'm gonna throw in a touch of sap green too. Just tap, okay, let's go back up here. Now maybe we're getting a little closer. We're beginning to see more color, more detail. So we'll just tap in some little background trees. Just some little background trees. They live right here. Wherever you think they ought to live, that's, that's exactly where they ought to live. There. See, and you say, oh my gosh, he's made one heck of a mess down here. You may be right, too. But what I'm hoping for, because this canvas is wet, you can do this. Watch right here. You can grab this and turn it right into reflections, just giving it a little gentle pull downward. There, and then lightly, lightly go across. Hmm. Instant reflections. This may be the nicest thing that happens with this painting technique. Okay, let's put a few highlights on there. I'm going into some cadmium yellow, a little bit of sap green, some yellow ochre, and I'm just gonna mix these colors on the brush. Just brush mix them. All right, let's go back up here. Now, just with the top corner of the brush, just tap in some indications of all kinds of happy little things happening here. Little bushes, little trees, far away. Don't put in too much detail. It's too far away when things get closer to you. Then you begin seeing all the beautiful little detail things. But back here, you don't see all that detail. So don't overdo it. Sometimes that can be very disturbing in a painting when there's too much detail in something that you want to look too far away. It ruins that illusion. There we go. See, and layer these things. Do one at a time and work forward, forward, forward. Helps create the illusion of distance, depth in the bushes. You know, those little tree urchins have to have a place to live. Hmm, tree urchins are squirrels. So they gotta have a little place back here to hide. See, that you don't care if a little bit of this yellowish color gets down into, into your water, because all you do is take it, pull it down also, and it becomes part of the reflections. And really, really makes your painting look a little better. Learn to work with whatever happens. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Happy accidents. Take a little brown and white right here. Cut across it, that little tiny roll of paint. And let's just put the little indication of land right in here. Just a little, I don't, I don't want a bunch. Just a little, far, far away. Far away, like so. There we go. Just barely touching the canvas. Allow the canvas to pull off what it wants. I take a little bit of liquid white, and with that, we can just cut in the indication of a happy little water line. And this water line, it tends to clean up the bottom of your little bushes and trees back here. And it gives you a light area in between the dark, so it separates. In painting, you're paying, playing light against dark, dark against light, continually. That's what makes it work. All right, now we can come on into the foreground here and really start playing. Let's have some fun. Let's get crazy today. I'm gonna take some brown. We'll throw in some Prussian blue, some sap green, some black. Anything that's dark, we don't care. Ooh, boy, what a mess. Let me clean this knife off. That's certainly dark. Now I'm gonna take the two inch brush and just go right into the paint and wiggle it. This is just an old dirty brush that was laying there. Wiggle, see, wiggle it, wiggle, wiggle it, wiggle it, and then sharpen it, just like you would a fine knife. See there? Now look how sharp that is. There you can see it. Ooh, that's just like a 
a razor, that's a chisel edge. Okay, let's go up here. Now with this super sharp chisel, let's have a happy evergreen that lives. Boy, he sure does now, right there. Now, sometimes we avoid this old big brush, but look what it can do. It makes the most beautiful evergreens. Don't be afraid of this two-inch brush. Jump in there and, and use it, play with it. It comes to a super, super sharp chisel edge, and you can do this with it. It might, might make better looking evergreens than some of the smaller brushes. They have a lot more character to them. Come down to about right there. Now then, you can take my knife, take a little of this dark sienna, a little white into it, pull it out, cut off a little bit of paint, and thus create a little tree trunk. And you don't see the entire trunk, but just here and there where you think you might see it, a little, a little tree trunk. Okay, I'll use this same old dirty big brush. I'll go right into some of the cad yellow. Now, since we had a little blue in that color, automatically this is gonna turn green. Beautiful green color. Bring it back to a chisel edge. Okay, let's go back up here. Now then, let's take and just put the indication of some highlights on this big old tree, some nice bright spots. And that easy, you have a fantastic little evergreen. Okay, lay the old brush down here. <clears throat> going back to the round brush, we'll go into our browns. This is a dark sienna in the Van Dyke. And let's have some fun right in here. In here, we're going, oh, look at here. Here comes a tree. Look at here, big, strong tree. He lives right there. And all we're doing right now is putting in the basic shape for that tree. Just the basic shape. Hmm. Isn't that fun? I like this old round brush. You can just tap in all kinds of things. Okay, we'll take the liner brush. We'll go into a little paint thinner. Right into some brown. The thinner will thin your paint down till it's like water. Turn that brush. Bring it to a point. We'll go right in here. And just put the indication of a of a happy little tree trunk. You could also do this with a knife if you wanted to, however you want to put it in. However, I tell you, I tell you what, let's tap a little more of this brown in here. I bet over here on this side would be a good place to have another little tree while we got it going. Let's just put one right in here. Hmm. See how easy that is? You can just put in all kinds of little things. Now I see a reflection right here, right here, watch. See, just pull it down. Once again, because the liquid white's under there, this is so easy. Instant reflections. Instant reflections. Now we can put some highlights. I'll just use this same old dirty round brush. We'll take some yellows, a little green, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, just touch. Okay, let's go up here. Now, just using the top corner of the brush, all you have to do is just gently, gently tap. Just tap. See, and put all those little highlights. Makes the indication of thousands of little leaves. Hmm. Well, I used to take my one-haired brush and spend days trying to get that effect. Absolutely days. Just begin, just begin picking out little, little shrubs and bushes, little places that the rabbits would hide. There we go. Birds have got to have a place to, to go and feel comfortable. I'm a bird fanatic. I like birds. I spend all my money on bird seeding and feed all of them in the country. But that's okay. When the birds take over, I'll have a friend. There. There we go. Tap that right in. See, just layer after layer, however many you want. However many you want. Okay, I'm gonna have some fun right in here. 
maybe there's a happy little cabin there. I like doing these little cabins, and they're so simple. Cut off a little bit of brown. See, pull it out flat and get that little roll of paint. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe this little cabin lives right here in the woods. Wouldn't that be a super place to have a little, a little house to come and hide? Okay, let's give him a roof. Zoom. And need a little front on the cabin. Both sides. See there? Just, just a quick little happy cabin. And a little bit over in here. This is just Van Dyke Brown and Dark Sienna, just mixed together. Okay, and then we can take a touch of brown and white, and then we can throw a little highlight on there. A little on this side, zoom. Just a touch, just a touch. Boy, that's a rough looking old cabin. Hunter built this one a long time ago. He was out here. Maybe there was a maybe there was a beaver lived out here, and he came out here and trapped a, trapped the animals. Maybe one day he had a couple of drinks too many and fell off in the lake here. And the old cabins just sort of went went back to nature. Okay, we'll take a little of that same brown color. Let's put some little happy things up here on the roof. Just touch and just let it sort of bounce down. Just bloop 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 bloop. I'm gonna take a, the least little bit of white and maybe just just sort of highlight this edge so it just stands out a little bit. Just so it stands out a tiny bit. Boy, that old cabin seen its better day. Now, now you can cut it off. See? You can do a cabinectomy. Hmm. Just sort of zip off whatever you don't want and work out your perspective. Then we go back to our round brush. Let's have some bushes and some weeds that are growing all up around. He didn't cut his grass very good either. Okay, some more brown. Maybe there's some happy stones that just live right in here. Little path. Just all kinds of little stones. A little brown and white for some highlight. Don't cover all your dark. Just sort of hit it here and there. We'll, we'll take a fan brush, a little yellows, a little green on it. Just mix it up real good. A lot of paint, okay? And come back in here. We'll put in some little happy grassy things all around in here. Look at that. All kinds of little things. Well, we got that old brush going. Maybe there's some over here, too. So we can sort of flatten this area out just by putting some little grass right in there. Right in there. And we'll put a stone or two. There's one. There's one. Just touch it with a little highlight color. Kind of have a little grassy areas there. I'm adding a little touch of the bright red in there just to sparkle that up. There. See how those stones just stand up in the grass? <laughs> Isn't that easy? Now we really try to make painting fun for you. Fun and easy. And I think it's working. We get thousands of letters from people all over the country that are telling us they're having unbelievable success. Here I'm using a little bit of liquid white. Just put in a happy little water line. And with the point of the knife, you can scrape in a few little sticks and twigs, wherever you want them. And as usual, Bob's going to put in a big tree. I like big trees, as you know. Let's take the old fan brush, load it full of brown, a little midnight black in it, and the big tree lives right there. Boy, that is a big tree when you have the canvas vertical. That's up and down. There, big tree, black and brown, just to give it a nice dark. Mm. Maybe, maybe there's a little tree here. See? You can just make as many trees in your world as you want. There we go. Now we can take the knife. We'll use a little red, a little dark sienna, a little white. Don't overmix, about like so. And let's just put the indication of some light shining right through here. Just 
just some happy little things sparkling. So leave your, leave your paint just partially mixed. Don't want to over mix it. Wherever you want it to go. You can put a little blue and white on the other side to make it look like a little reflected light. A little touch of white right here where the light's really striking. Look at there. Mm. It's that little light color against the dark background. Really makes those trees pop out. You can see them. You can really see them. Okay, I'm going to take a touch of the liquid black on the liner brush and just put the indication of a tree limb here and there. Just here and there. See? Just, just wherever you think there should be a limb. That one, see? It went behind that tree. This liquid black works very nice for putting out a lot of tree limbs real quick. There goes one right over the mountain. Mm, that one hurt. After you work so long and hard on your mountain and start throwing tree limbs all over it. See, there we go. There we go. Just some indications here and there. Wherever you think they should be, then that's where they should be. Now then, let's take, we'll take the old two inch brush. This is the same old dirty brush I had. It's got some green on it. And let's go right up in here and just put the indication of just all kinds of beautiful little leaves that are living on these trees. Just by touching, just touch. See, and you can put as many or as few as you want. Well, it's about time for me to leave you today. I really hope you've enjoyed this painting and it's given you a lot of ideas. I think you'll like it. So, I think we'll call this one finished. And with that, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. See you next time.